In this English pronunciation tutorial, you're going to improve your English speech by learning what happens when a word ends in a vowel and then the next word begins with a vowel. This rule will immediately help you to speak better English and it's essential to know it if you want to sound professional in English. I'm going to give you the rule and I'm then going to give you 10 examples of this rule in use in English so you can see exactly how it works and then learn to implement it for yourself. If you feel like you could improve your English speech and that by doing so would help you to get ahead in your career and help you to enjoy a better quality of life, then click subscribe and turn notifications on for weekly English pronunciation tutorials to help you speak better English, sound more professional and get ahead in business and in life. Also follow me on Instagram and LinkedIn for additional exclusive content and share this video with someone that you know that's learning English and could benefit from improving their English speech. Let's dive in and get started with the lesson. So this rule that we're going to learn today is example number two of linking sounds in English. In the first video that I did explaining linking sounds in English, we looked at what happens when a word ends in a consonant and the next word begins in a vowel. In this video, we're looking at what happens when it's vowel plus vowel. And in the next tutorial, you're gonna learn exactly what happens when a word ends in a consonant and the next word begins in another consonant. So there are three different possibilities for linking sounds in English, and this one is vowel plus vowel. Now, within this vowel sound, there are two different opportunities. There are opportunities for words to end in the vowel sounds e, a and I, and also for words to end in the vowel sounds O and O. Okay, now if you were paying attention there, what did you notice about the two different things when you were looking at my lips? If you were paying attention, you'd have seen that the first group of sounds I mentioned, E, A and I, my lips are unrounded. My lips are like this. Okay, they're, they're closer together and they're unrounded. In the second two sounds, O and O, my lips are rounded. There's two different things that happens. One, when your lips are like this, E, and when your lips are like this, like that. So we're gonna start by looking at the first three sounds, E, A, and I. So what happens when a word ends in one of these three vowel sounds, E, A, and I, and the next word begins with another vowel sound, is the next word starts with the sound Y, 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 Y. For example, me and, with the two vowel sounds there being E and A, would become me and, me and me and. A bit quicker, me and. Can you hear how that all of a sudden there's a Y sound, a Y, Y, Y in there? This is what happens for all these first three vowel sounds. So what I'm going to do now is give you two examples for each of these first three vowel sounds. The first one is me and. That would become me and. And in an example, that would be me and you both like chocolate. Me and you both like chocolate. Another example would be the two words he opened. So you've got the two sounds e, o, all right? It ends in an e, so the next sound will start with a, a, a y sound. He opened, he opened, he opened. So I could say, he opened the packet of crisps. He opened the packet of crisps. Listen for the Y sound. He opened the packet of crisps. Now for a word ending in I. Let's look at the two words, cry, if. So I, 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 I. That would become, instead of cry, if, it would become cry, if. 
cry yes, cry yes. For example, I cry if I see a certain film. I cry if I see this film. A bit quicker. I always cry if I see that film. I always cry if I see that film. I always cry if I see that film. Can you hear the why there? Another example would be by, around. I, ya, I, ya, I, a. Uh. By around. So instead of saying buy around, I buy around three bags of beans a week, I'd say I buy ya round three bags of beans a week. I buy ya round three bags of crisps a week. I buy around three bags of crisps a week. Or another example in context here in London, if we go out for drinks and we go to the pub um, and there's a group of three or four of us, we would each buy what's called a round of drinks. So that's, I'm gonna buy everyone a drink, then the next person will buy everyone a drink. So I might say, I'm going to buy a round. I'm going to buy a round. I'm going to buy your round, okay? You don't emphasize the why. You don't go, I'm going to buy your round. It just happens when you put the words together quickly. I'm going to buy a round, okay? The other example would be a, 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 hey, or way, okay, or obey. So let's just look at two examples of a with another word starting with a vowel sound. Way about, way about. So I could say, I weigh about 13 stone. I weigh about 13 stone. Putting that together, it would be, I weigh about, I weigh about. Listen for the Y sound, I weigh about. So, I weigh about 13 stone. How much do you weigh? I weigh about 13 stone. Could you hear it? Another example would be the word hey and the name of a person, Amanda. So if I see uh, a friend over there called Amanda, I could say, hey Amanda, hey Amanda, hey Amanda. So what I'm saying there, instead of saying, hey Amanda, I'm saying, hey Amanda, hey Amanda, hey Amanda, hey Amanda. Can you hear it? Hey Amanda, all right? So I've given you examples there for A, I, and E. We've now got the other example of words ending in vowel sounds where the next word begins with a vowel of O and O. So what happens when you have this particular combination of sounds? What happens is instead of using a Y to begin the next word, you use the W sound, W, W, W. So the combination of you and would become you wand, you wand. Putting it together quicker, you and, you and, you and, you and I, you and I, you and I. I'm not saying you and I, because that sounds really unnatural, you and I, it's, that's really boom, 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 and it's not nice. Instead we say you and I. You and I, you and I. Can you hear it? You and I both like chocolate. Another example would be who, who, is. So the two vowel sounds there are oo and i, 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 oo, i, oo, i. What happens is who is, who is that, becomes who is that, who is that. Who is that? Can you see how my lips just glide in between the two vowel sounds? Who is that? Okay. Who is that? Who is that? Oh, it's Steve. Hi, Steve. Who is that? And the final um, sound for this particular example then would be O, O, O. Slow, slow, slow. So what I could say is, instead of slow it, slow it down, which is really unnatural again, it becomes slow it down, 
slow it down, slow it down. The W moves to the it. Slow wit, slow wit, slow wit. Okay, slow it down. Let's slow this example down. Let's slow it down. And just finally, one final example, glow in, glow in. So the vowel sound that's finishing the first word is O, it's a diphthong, and the vowel sound that's beginning the second word is I, 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 O, I, O, I. And instead of saying glow in, glow in, I'm saying glow in, glow in, glow in, glow in. So I could say, I want to buy a watch and it needs to glow in the dark. It needs to glow in the dark. It needs to glow in the dark. Can you hear that? Glow in the dark. Think of it like this. English is a language that goes in waves. It's up, down, up, down, up, down. It wants to glide. It's not a language that's like okay? So if you didn't have these um, sounds connecting the words, it would sound like this, glow in, glow in, which it isn't like that. The language English isn't like that. Instead it glides, glow in, glow in. So when you practice the examples that I've given you in this lesson today, think of it like this. Imagine that the English you're speaking is like a wave. It's going up and down, up and down, up and down. That's how you want it to sound. What I want you to do now is comment below with the example here that you found most helpful. Getting clear on which example you found most helpful is gonna really help you to actually um, clarify the knowledge that I've given you here and actually internalize it as well. And then what I want you to do over the coming week is really think about using this rule in your English speech. Write down some examples for yourself. You can put them in the comments too. Um, and just, yeah, do a bit of practice every day and it's really, really going to help. If you feel like these examples and these tutorials are improving your English speech, then click subscribe and turn on notifications. Um, watch other videos as well. In the next tutorial that's gonna come up, you're going to learn exactly how to use a consonant at the end of one word with a consonant at the beginning of the next word. That's the third example with linking sounds, okay? Please share this video with a friend that's learning English. Um, tell them about it, it's really gonna help them to improve their English speech too. Subscribe for more videos coming out like this on a weekly basis. Join me on LinkedIn and Instagram and I will see you in the next video. Take care.